We've got quite a matchup for you on the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel Playoff Edition. In the first round, two of the top programs in 4A. Tim View visiting Logan for a first round matchup. How did these two get here? Well, if you haven't been following, it's all about mix-ups and ineligibility and everything else. Tim View, the number two team in the state, had to take a few uh, suspensions with kids that were ineligible. They had to forfeit a few games. So they end up playing Logan in the first round of the uh, 4A state playoffs. A 9-1 and one team against an 8-2 and two team. Number two against number four. Logan coming off that big win against East and now the road to the playoffs starts with number two, Tim View. It doesn't get much tougher than that. We talked to both coaches about that. We'll talk about some of the top players in the state. Jake Lloyd and Luke Falk, two of the top quarterbacks in the state, at least statistically, on the field today. So don't go anywhere. The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel is coming up next. Introducing the official training bike of the Tour de France, the Proform TDF, the first ever indoor training bike that delivers everything you demand. A 20% incline and a 20% decline, so you'll experience exactly what the road does. Because it's powered by Google Maps, you choose the road and the TDF follows it. Every incline and decline, so no matter what comes at you, you'll be ready. The Proform TDF automatically adjusts resistance, incline and decline. Plus, with a built-in power meter, you'll know your exact output. You decide where to go, and the official training bike of the Tour takes you there. And now that you've decided, we're ready to deliver. Order right now and get zero down and a free upgrade on rush shipping. Call the number on your screen or go online today. Game of the Week on the Valley Channel pits Timpview against Logan in a first-round match. Game of the Week is brought to you by Icon. Health and fitness, never give up. Lewiston State Bank, your hometown bank with a new location at 3rd South and Main in Logan. Wendy's of Cache Valley, quality is our recipe. Cache Valley Hospital, your first choice in health care. Discount Tire and Automotive, so much more than a tire store. The Salt Lake Express, from your door to the Salt Lake Airport, 12 times a day. Jesse Needham Jewelers, where Utah gets engaged. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's television station. Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. Tim View at Logan, a playoff edition. Let's jump right into our coaches' interviews. Coach Mike Favero had plenty to say about everything that's gone on in the last week. Well, it's always a nice day for a football game, but it's a real nice day today. With everything that's gone on the last week, you guys, your road's gotten a little harder, but you just have to play who they put in front of you. Yeah, we obviously were disappointed in the lack of leadership and integrity of the High School Athletic Association and think they made, made a mockery of their own system. That being said, we've been dealt to hand and we're ready to play it. Does it help when you play a team like Tim View that, you know, you do similar things? You guys pass it a little bit more than they do. They'll run it a little bit more, but, uh, you know, your, your defense sees a similar look. They see a passing offense all the time in practice. Does it make any difference? Well, from a preparation standpoint, it could. You'd hope to believe that your coaching staff can prepare for any scheme that you see, but there's no question we've had a greater volume of reps because we do similar things throughout the course of this season. One thing the Grizzlies need to do to win on your side, and one thing you need to shut down on their side. The margin of error for mistakes for us is razor thin. We have to play a, a, a flawless game, and we've got to win the turnover battle. And that goes for every team every game, so we know that there's a very small margin of error, and uh, we're excited. Our kids are fired up, and we're going to we're gonna play. I've, I told our guys it always feels better when it's harder. Now, life is not about doing things the easy way, and we've, we've been put in a tough situation. We're ready to see you battle through it. All right. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Now Coach Favero's team 8-2 coming into this one, the number one in the state quarterback as far as total offense, 3,426 yards from Luke Falk, and he's got two of the top receivers and one of the top defenders 
uh, in Ballum in the state. So plenty of stars on this Logan team, but they've had a lot of people step up because of injuries this season. It's been a team season for the Grizzlies. On the other side of the ball, Coach Kerry Winningham in his first year as the head coach of the Timview Thunderbirds, and they've had their share of controversy this year. Well, you guys with a great season, and then when the way things have played out the last week or so, now you've got a really, really tough road through your bracket in the playoffs, but I guess to be the best, you have to beat the best. Yeah, sooner or later, you're going to have to play all these teams anyway. It, uh, there, there, there was a uh, mix-up in some things, and it's got us here, but like you said, to play to play against this team to start out, it's, it's going to come sooner or later, and we're going to be willing to play anybody, anytime, anywhere, so we'll get it done today if we can. Yeah, two offenses in this game that can really throw the ball around, but you guys are really able with Aspinall to run the ball, it seems like. Yeah, we have a well-rounded offense, able to throw the ball downfield pretty well, and when we need to, we can run it. You got a defensive lineman, and you can help me with his name, but 18 and a half sacks. He's, that kid's really burst onto the scene this year. What makes him so special? Uh, Peter Talma Penu. He's very fast. He has, he has speed to spare is what makes him special. When you look at the Logan Grizzlies, tell me what you need to stop in order to come out on top and what your team needs to do in order to come out on top. Offensively, we need to ball control. And the reason we need to is because they have an excellent offense that throws the ball real well. So we need to pressure the QB and cover well. That's the key. All right, good luck. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Tim View averaging almost 41 points per game. They give up 14. And that quarterback of theirs, Mr. Lloyd, Jake Lloyd, uh, 154 for 240, 2,723 2, yards, 38 touchdowns, six interceptions, and he's number two in the state in career touchdown passes with 65. Well, the thing that's most impressive about Lloyd and his passing ability is a 64.2% completion rate, which is really, really good, and that's what moves this offense down the field for Timpview. Among other things, they have great running back in Aspinall as well. Yeah, Aspinall, 99 carries, 698 yards. That's just over seven yards per carry, 10 touchdowns on the ground. And that is one difference, one of the questions I asked Coach Favero about, you know, does it help your team to prepare for this team when you throw the ball around and a lot in practice and they throw the ball? And, but one thing that Tim, you can do that Logan hasn't been able to do this year, or they really haven't tried to, is is run the football. Logan hasn't really <laughs> even tried to establish Logan, a running Logan game. hasn't cared to. <laughs> And Coach Vero said, hey, that's our running game. Our passing game is our running game. So they don't even really try to establish it. They did a little bit against East early, and they had a little bit of success and in a game where they had a lot of success against that number two team in the state in all divisions. All right, let's take a break, and we'll be back for the kickoff first-round game. Timpview against Logan. You're watching it on the Valley Channel. Clark Salt Lake Express and the airport shuttle have merged and become one. So we still have doorstep service and it's about the same price as it was before. Our focus now is to try to provide as many opportunities for people who, who need to have the ability to get to and from Salt Lake when they want. They don't want to wait at the airport for two hours. They also don't want to be driving around the valley when they get here. And you bring us to a location that leaves on time. We'll have another vehicle take you here to save time comfortably and that main vehicle goes 12 times a day on schedule both leaving the valley and coming back. All right, we're back. Crimson Field, Timpview will take the field first. A chance to move that ball up and down. We will see Jake Lloyd at Al. And the Logan defense will be called upon to keep the all-white T-Birds out of the end zone. Lee, what you got there? Well, I got the starting uh, offensive team for Timpview, which they're going to start on offense today. Dax Raymond, number seven, Jake Lloyd, number 12, Rhett Van Leeuwen, number 19, little brother of Van Leeuwen. For Utah State, Braden Gallon, number 32, Gregson Aspinall, uh, Mason Faumui, uh, John Henry Lara, Joe Watanabe, Christian Sorensen, Nafatali Tassina, and Ian Atherton. And after this kickoff, we'll talk about Logan's defensive players, which I think are 
I think that's where this game's going to be won or lost. It's defense, because both teams score a lot of points. Somebody's got to stop somebody. Logan yeah. averaging 36 a game. Tim View averaging 40. A 10-point outing against Mountain Crest really brought Logan's average down. Because Timpview used an ineligible player that they self-reported in four games, they ended up forfeiting four player or four games. So they end up at five and five instead of nine and one, and that's why. And they get the third seed in their region, region eight, and that's why they're playing Logan in the first round. That means that the bracket that Logan is in is ridiculously tough. Oh yeah, it has Logan, it has Timpview, uh -huh. it has East. Yeah, it's uh, you know, honestly, when those those. Um, when those rulings came down and, and, frankly, the appeals were upheld, I wondered who was getting punished, Harriman and Logan or East and Timpview? Everybody but East. Yeah, everybody but Th East. That's how most people feel. Yeah, pretty much. That would be awesome if you'd be Harriman, guys. Hey, Lloyd hey. looks underneath, completes the first pass of the game, and it gets up near first down yardage to Gallon. Gallon, where they're going to spot it, they're going to say he got there to the 30. It's 10 yards on a first down. Gallon, a big senior running back, uh, six foot one, 185 pounds. And if you take a look at the uh, the size of the Tempview kids, they are monstrous. Well, 75 to Cena. He is 315. Six, three, 315. Three bills and a stack of pancakes. The rest of their offensive line goes 260, 265, and 250. Atherton goes in motion and he blocks on the edge as they give it off to Aspinall and Aspinall picks up about a yard. A little windy today, you can probably hear that, hear that in our mics. It looks warm, it's not. <laughs> it's Cache Valley in a late October warm. Yeah, no kidding. I'm going to put my beanie on here in a minute. Bald head getting cold. Well, you're getting to be a senior citizen. You I don't, know. don't have much circulation. <laughs> Doing a game with my grandpa. Definitely no circulation to my brain, that's true. <laughs> Lloyd in the gun, Aspinall back there with him. Fakes the inside give and runs a little screen outside, popping out and making some yardage after making just about everybody miss is Britton Covey. That's one of those runs that as a defender you're looking at going, oh, I just want to, I want to hit him again. <laughs> that's not going to happen again. Eight yards and a first down. Yep. Lots of swings and misses. As you mentioned, they're just so close. That's a great block right there. It's no hold. That's a good block, just driving the man out. Bracken Williams, you saw him chasing and didn't quite get broke down, and a nice move by Covey to pick up the extra yardage. It looked like he was going to be stopped for no gain. First and 10, Van Leeuwen in motion. Lloyd gets hit as he throws by Wildman. Hauled in, and it's going to be a Timpview touchdown. Dax Raymond right on the money. And Logan having trouble tackling in the early going here. 58 yards. Now this is a great pass, and it's set up very well on the rollout. Dax is all by himself, number seven there, and, and he's, a, he's a big target. That's his 52nd catch on the season. He averages 19.75 yards per catch. 6'5", 217. Hard to bring down. That's his 14th touchdown. Took less than two minutes for Tim Pugh to get on the board. 10-18 to play in the first quarter. 7-0, T-Birds. Logan High School, 50-yard plus touchdowns, abundant for Timview this year, and they just added another one, 58 yards. Lloyd to Raymond. Lloyd put it right on the money, a little half rollout, dropped it right in Raymond's 
bread basket, and Raymond did the rest. 7-0. We always talk about Luke Falk's great numbers this season, 34 touchdowns and 8 interceptions. Uh, Lloyd from 10th view now with 39 touchdowns and 6 interceptions, so even more efficient. Ran the ball once and threw it three times on that possession. This one returnable. And it's Compton slipping out of tackles. And he gets up to about the 30-yard line. And that's where the Logan offense will start trailing 7-0. Boy, that's a, that's a big return for Compton. Number 15. He's uh, He's been very prolific this year as well from the receiving side. Compton with 10 touchdowns on the year. Compton doesn't get tripped up there. He may still be yeah. running. The guy to watch is number 45 for Temp View. Pita Talmoy Penu. 18 and a half sacks from the defensive end spot. Wow. He's number 45. I think they're going to get rich with the movement. Illegal procedure against the Grizzlies. Five yard penalty. First down 15. <coughs> There's Falk. He goes to the sideline and talks to Coach Favero. And Logan's first offensive play, a penalty. <laughs> Talmoy Penu nearly off sides. He's... He's antsy. He's antsy. Speed is what Coach Whittingham says is his is his uh, best attribute. And he didn't get there, but one of his teammates did. It looked like it was P.O. Stowers. Well, this uh, this defensive set that Timpy's using, Logan has used to, with some success as well. With a lot of guys standing up on the front line. It's hard to get blocking assignments. They're moving around, and that's what happens there. A couple of blocking assignments break down, and Falk dropped for a big loss. Stowers first one there, and Teo Moipenu is right there to help. Falk with that injury against East is fine, is what we've been told. He had those extra three days to heal it. Now it's going to be third down and 20 as he's too long on that one. Falk needs 10 more completions to break the state record of 317 in a season. He didn't get it there, get one there. Third and 21. Looks like they're going to do single man coverage on the edges. Underneath they go to Compton, trying to get some of that yardage back. It was, he had one man to beat, and he couldn't do it. We saw on the first possession, Logan's defense had trouble tackling. On this possession, Emmett Taylor, no trouble tackling there. And Timview sure-handed. And now the Timview offense will get a chance. They usually run that little screen to Compton out on the edge, like a little bubble screen. Mm -hmm. That time they ran it inside. Ran that slant and there was nothing going. Timpview is very fast. You wonder if you'll see more of those the way that pass rush comes for Timpview. Ball caught on the run and returned up near Holloway midfield by Isaiah Holloway. Holloway leads <laughs> Timpview defense interceptions with three. Taylor who made that tackle on Compton, 72 tackles on the year. Well, we were talking about in the truck before the game started. How, how is all this drama going to play with teenage boys' heads, which is <laughs> you yeah. never you never can guess how that's going to go. And, and honestly, it was said that they they could use all this as fuel. And it looks so far like Tim Few has used it for fuel and banded together. Boy, underneath, got his man. Ball, Ball. fumbled. It's on the ground, and Logan's got it. Dax Raymond didn't take it with him. He picked up four yards, but then he turned it over. That's what happened last week with East. Jackson Berkey on the recovery. Johnny on the spot. Sees that ball in front of him. Excuse me, that was Jackson Berkey on the recovery. Take a look at the replay here. You're right, Raymond just doesn't tuck it away, and it gets punched out. Jaden Connor. Jaden Connor punches it out, and... Uh, Logan says, thank you very much. McIntyre motions in to help on the end. Three-man rush. Fault 
gets rid of it. Caught by Compton. He's down inside the 35 to the 34 yard line. 18 yards and a first down for the Grizzlies. Well, that's a nice pass over the outstretched arms of the defender and right in the bread basket of Compton. It's a great pass. Well, even with only a three man rush, Timpview was putting wow. pressure on Falk. They're running something similar to what Mountain Crest did. Everybody just kind of standing yeah. up and coming from everywhere. I think they looked at that film. <laughs> Falk stands in, delivers, wide open Compton. Touchdown, Grizzlies. No flags. Oh, and that pop that Falk took doesn't hurt quite as bad with six at the end of it, but he's, he might feel that here in a second. He got pounded. Somebody missed an assignment, you think? I don't know how you'd miss Compton. That's his 11th touchdown in the season. He scored a few. You've probably seen that on tape. Falk see if we see it right here. Yeah, he just gets rocked and lets that ball go just in time. Falk three of four for 54 yards and a touchdown. All of them to Compton. We have a quarterback battle going on here. As Lloyd passed for a touchdown and 80 yards. And there's still eight minutes to play in the first period. We're tied at seven. Hi, I'm Randy Anderson, owner of Master Mechanic in Providence. Every repair we do at Master Mechanic comes with our peace of mind guarantee, meaning all repairs are guaranteed for three years or 36,000 miles. That's triple the industry standard. Summer travel time is here. Before you hit the road, stop by and have our ASC certified technicians inspect your vehicle. Prevent vacation breakdowns with our pre-trip inspection. Master Mechanic in Providence, taking the worry out of summer travel. I guarantee it. Well, Logan getting set to kick off after they tie the game at 7. Compton on the season, 94 catches, 1,008 yards, and 10 touchdowns. Well, he's now at 1,062 yards and 11 touchdowns. And he's closing in on 100 catches, and that's the record for a season in the state. Holloway does not get to the 25-yard line. It's off about the 23, and that's where Timview takes over. Well, we talked about at the end of the game, really, who plays defense today, probably going to win this game. So uh, neither team's had a great time playing defense. Logan went three and out on their first possession, but got right back in the saddle on their next. Now Lloyd gives it off. Aspinall picks up six. I don't count the seven. That's right out of season average of 7.05. That is stout. <laughs> Take it again, go around the other end. Cuts it back inside, right at the markers, and he keeps churning. And he's got nearly 10 yards after it looked like he was stopped right at the marker. He's got nine and a first down. Well, the, the officials, rightly so, did not blow it dead. Logan just kind of gave up on the play thinking they were going to. There's nothing fancy about this. Aspinall sees the opening. Look at the quick cut. Cuts right back up the middle. Look at his, looks at his blocking. And right there, he looks like he's going to be stopped, maybe right at the sticks, but picks up another five yards after that. He faked the give to Aspinall. Lloyd's got a man wide open in the flat. That's Gallon. Gallon across uh, midfield. Takes a wallop and picks up big yardage. 19 yards, wide open in the flat. Lloyd starts this game five of five, 99 yards and a touchdown. Logan's gonna have to try to figure out a way to get to Lloyd. Yeah, he's, he's put him had, on the ground. He's had all day and they've done a good job rolling him out, giving him extra time. And like we said earlier, that's a pretty good sized offensive line. 
and seven. Not really bringing people after Lloyd. Aspinall with the give, and there's a flag. He gets down to the 31 yard line, but the back. head official, who's an illegal shift against Timview. There were two guys moving. So Timview with their first infraction of the game. One for Logan, one for Timview. Instead of first down at the Logan 31, it's going to be first down back at the 48. Tied at seven with six minutes to play in the first period. The first round of the state 4A playoffs. And a quality team that's going to be going home today. Here's that little screen out there again. This time it's to Van Lewin. Van Lewin, 6'2", 180 pounds. Good size receiver, picks up four. And Lloyd stays perfect. I believe that was Ian Atherton on the reception. Second down to 11. Lloyd, six for six, 103 yards and a touchdown. Raymond, two catches, 60 yards. Gallon, Aspinall, Van Lewin, and Covey each for the catch. Compton playing corner on this side against Raymond. That's a huge size in this match. Right up the middle, it looks like Gallon. And he picks up about five. It's going to be third and six. Well, Logan's just getting blown off the ball, and they've got to do something to stop the forward momentum of Timpview. Gallon comes off the field limping. Blasted right on that hip. They take him out of there. They're talking to him on the sideline, but they don't look overly concerned. Three receivers to the near side. And off. Raymond and Atherton. They're going inside to Eckhoff. And Eckhoff's got a first down. And again, Logan getting hands on a Timview player and then giving up another five or seven yards before they can bring him down. Eleven yards and a quick hitter. They don't want to get their quarterback hit, and they are not keeping him in the pocket. And they're just doing no nope. little quick stuff, aren't they? And it seems to be working. It works really well when you give up five yards after the catch. Keep the quarterback upright. He's got a good rhythm going. He's seven for seven. Now he's going to give it off right up the gut. Goes Aspinall. He hits that Aspinall line going 100 miles an hour, and there's a flag right where he came down to hold. I mean, he's three yards downfield before anybody even touches him. They're blowing Logan off the ball so bad. And it's a hold on Tim. Maybe that's what's helping him. <laughs> but holding's one of those funny penalties. Call it. Uh, as much as you want, usually. Pretty much. And a lot of times officials will look at it and say, well, did it help on the play? If it was it's away true. from the play, if it didn't give anybody a clear advantage. And the official that threw the flag is motioning to the sideline, putting his arms out like he's giving a big bear hug. Because <laughs> uh, Tim View was wondering, what did he do? Yeah. And he's saying, well, he, he bear hugged. Him. Sounds like it was pretty obvious to me. I didn't see it, but I saw the official move the flag back, and it's usually the indicator. So. Three-man line now for Logan. Got Sam Banyan playing with a cast on his hand. This is Lloyd keeping it. We haven't seen him run it yet. He's, uh, he's got 216 yards rushing, and he gets back some of that penalty yardage. Back about seven. And now it's third down. Look at the top of your screen there. Raymond, number seven, blocking downfield. Wilson from Logan is going to have to do something to get off that block as he's just getting worked. You notice that the Timpy receivers do a great job blocking downfield. Wild and some defensive end to this side. Benyon the other side. On third and 13. They move that pocket again. Lloyd has a man wide open. It's Raymond. He's running down the middle of the field. Nobody running with him, and it's a Timpview touchdown. 
I mean, he's not that big. He's hard to lose at six foot five. <laughs> somebody, somebody zigged when they should have zagged, and it's a 32-yard touchdown on third and 14. Yeah, look for the kid in the middle, running down the middle of the field. He's six foot five and all white. Oh, there he is, all by himself. N nearest defender is five and a half yards behind <laughs> and five yards to the side. Kicks good. It's 14-7. Timpu back out front with 2.52 to play in the first period. Yeah, that one hit hard on the outside. Hi, I'm Wendy. Yep, that one. And I'm proud to introduce Dave's Hot and Juicy Cheeseburgers. They're all new and are best yet. With thicker, hotter, juicier beef, melty cheese, and a warm butter toasted bun. So come on in. You know it is real. This is a 68 Buick Skylark, and we're just working on the lights. This is a 92 Toyota Corolla, and we're just putting in a new alternator. This is a 97 Pontiac Transport, and we've had the whole motor apart, putting in new intake manifold gaskets. For all your automotive needs, big or small, see A1 Automotive. Well, a 32-yard touchdown pass is Raymond. Must have been a blown coverage because Raymond was running free. Six foot five target in all white, as Lee said, running down the middle of the field. Nobody around him. Here's a pretty decent return by the Grizzlies. Number 35, Number 35 Caden Scott Anderson. And Logan now trailing by a touchdown again. We'll start a decent field position. Not the 33 yard line. Caden Scott Anderson, a linebacker. And chance at a return there. Falk with nobody in the backfield with him. Tim View kind of keeping up this big mess offense where you don't know who's coming or from where. Oh, they throw it way out to Compton and Compton is lit up by Covey and he loses a yard. Well, just in case the defensive Logan forgot how to tackle, that's how you do it. <laughs> Drive through the man, use your shoulder, shoulder pad and wrap up. That's a textbook tackle, really. Well, you see how hard he came up. What happens is that sets up, you, you fake it the next time and then release the guy if they're biting that hard. But you have to give Falk enough time. If that play is anything else, Falk's getting hit. He had somebody bearing down on him from the backside, wasn't even touched. Look at them all. Six guys coming, Falk's got Compton. Compton runs backwards. And Coach Favero is going nuts. You know, get what you can, young man, but go forward doing it. You got a lot of game, and you're only down seven, and it's no gain. It'll be third and long. Compton, the only receiver that's caught a ball for the Grizzlies in this game. 130 to play in the first quarter. Nice time for Falk. Artis now. Hauls it in, and he's got a first down. Artist with a monster game against East. The best, the best uh, all season by a receiver anywhere in the state. 21 yards on third down, and that was a big play. I think that's a, that's a great play call is to get Artist in space and let him use his speed and athleticism. This Tempe team is not going to fall for the screen play that we've seen so often in this Logan offense. Compton. You know, he started to go backwards again, and then he said, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Coach got mad. Four yards. Compton, six catches. So he's at 100 catches for the season. Rich McIntyre. Looks like artist to this side. Two receivers to the far side. One of them's Braddy. The other one's in. They give it to Braddy. Braddy hauled yes, down after a first down game. You know, Braddy, some of the, they have to get into the offense and get him in, in rhythm as well. That's his first first time he's been thrown at today. 
He's got 89 catches now on the season for mm -hmm. 1,048 yards. 100 for Compton. 89 for Braddy. Braddy was ahead for a while, and teams really started focusing on him. And then Compton had a bunch of big games. Nobody's on Zach Rich. Now they bring the safety over. No safety in the middle of the field. Nice block up front as Falk delivers to Rich. Rich down to the 20 yard line. He got a great block from I think the end or the tackle. And it's a 13 yard reception. Wayne Falk sees that empty spot where the safety's playing deep off of Rich and that's who he's looking at all the way and never looks any other direction. 10 seconds to play in the quarter. I don't know if Logan's going to run a play. They're not. So at the end of one period of play, we got a good one brewing at Crimson Field. It's 14 7. Timpy with the lead. Logan in the red zone. How do you old grist mill? <laughs> old grist mill bread company, Ogden, Brigham, Logan. First and 10 from the Timp View 20 for Logan. Falk, lots of time. Now he takes off. He's not going to win many foot races, but he had enough Falk, room that he ends up picking eight yards first up on first down. Now, in the first quarter, the Logan offensive line is having a little bit of trouble with this big, fast Timp View defensive line. The last few plays, They've protected Falk quite well. Well, they're calling a few more quick, quick pass plays too, to get that ball out of his hands sooner, which is wise if you want your quarterback to remain in for the game. Compton against Taylor, the linebacker. Let's see if they look at that as a, oh, as a mismatch. And of course, I said it. And what happens? Falk gets buried. Wow. Four-yard well, loss. That extra half a step, he had to wait for the high Good snap and kind of threw him off of his rhythm. By then, he was fresh meat. Second sack of the game for Timpview. Logan and you wonder He's if they're in four-down territory. Yeah, Timpview, they're just pinning their ears back and coming after Falk. And you think if they will vary the cadence that they may be able to get some of those. P.O. Pio Stowers was offside trying to get that blitz. We've seen him blitz as many as six people. Sometimes they bring three, sometimes they bring six. Yeah. This is exactly what Mountain Crest did to him. Linebacker acts like he's coming. Right up the middle, let's see. That same kid who was offsides a second ago. I don't think he's gonna jump this time. They're bringing four. Somebody comes free, Falk releases his receiver on the ground in the end zone, and there's no flag. Fourth and two. Fourth and two. So look, look wow. right there, Braddy. Wow, is underneath. Compton had his man beaten. Falk, he's a quarterback. He goes for the end zone. Falk is nine of eleven. 99 yards and a touchdown. Now it's fourth and two. A big fourth down early in this game. Falk can't get the ball there. Compton was being held. No yeah. call and the 
Grizzlies come off the field. Yeah, that was a pretty blatant holding call. Yeah, they had a hold Missed. of Compton. The ball doesn't have to be catchable either for that call in, in high school. He couldn't even turn around, but Falk didn't have the ball anywhere near. It looked like maybe, I don't know if it slipped or what. Yeah. It's getting cold out there, a little cloud cover now rolling in and reducing the temperature even more. So Logan with a great opportunity to tie the score. This is the, this is kind of danger area. It's funny to say that with 10.58 to play in the first half is Timview illegal procedure, but you know, you don't get in. And now if you let Timview get something going and score again, it just starts to snowball on you. Let's see if the Logan defense made any changes there in that uh, Logan offensive possession. They had some time. We're still going with the three man front. It's coverages that they've kind of struggled with. Four now. They did change to four. Went back to a 4 3. Yeah. Here's the give. Time Galland picks up six. And these Timpview runners are getting five yards downfield before anybody's even putting a hand on them. Their offensive line's opening up some big holes. We've seen Logan be pretty stout against the run all year long. Even East that really pounds the ball. Didn't have a huge running game. Well, they did day. in the first half. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, uh, Logan made some adjustments and stopped him. Now, somebody was there again for Logan, and he got a doll, and he got knocked out of there, and a flag downfield. Let's see what the call is. Back judge threw it in from way downfield. It's going to be a spot foul. It's a holding on Timview. Now the tackle was made for no gain. So do you take third and eight, or do you take second? And where that flag was, it'd make it second and about 14? Oh, I still take third and eight, I think. Holding. Anytime you can reduce the amount of a downs and opportunity snaps that Timview has, the better off I think you are. And it is declined. Timpview with a third down, only their second third down of the game. They were successful on their first third down conversion attempt. Ten minutes to play in the first half, 14-7, Timpview. Lloyd's gonna run it. Lloyd's got a lot of room far side. They needed eight yards. They got 20 on the quarterback draw. They just collapsed the left side of the Logan line. And Lloyd's no speedster. He's not slow, but look at the blocking in there. They just sealed that off. I think Lloyd was surprised to see so much extra space there. <laughs> 55 yards rushing here in this first half for Timpview to go with 146 yards in the air. And they haven't put the ball in the air yet on this possession. They still have Aspinall around the far side edge. Stays in bounds and a flag about a yard downfield. One thing that's piling up for the T-Birds in addition to yards is penalties. Yard Another hold Holy against Timpy. That's five penalties on Timpview. One that was not accepted, so six thrown flags. Three of those were holds. First and 18 for Timpview. Logan defense has to figure out a way to get off the field. They turned Timview over once on a fumble. But two other drives ended in a score for the Thunderbirds. Aspinall, another big hole. Aspinall into the secondary and finally hauled down. He gets all the penalty yardage back plus a couple. 
Aspinall gets hit twice before he's even close to coming down. Picks up 10 yards. An arm tackle there, arm tackle there. Finally brought down by the ankles. Yeah, that's what's it's surprising, Lee. All, uh, all season long, Logan's been a very good tackling team. And they've struggled today. A lot of that may have to do with the few runners. Running hard, and it's the whistle now. Timeout, Timview. Second and seven. The winner of this game goes on to play uh, most likely Woods Cross. Who's Woods Cross playing, I wonder? Well, I'm looking for that right oh. now. Oh. I got too many sheets right here. In front of they're, they're playing Westlake. I thought you were the receptacle of all knowledge. Westlake in the same uh, region as Timview, correct? I believe so, yeah. yeah. No, no, they're not. They're in Region 7. Oh. Skyview's playing Orem, who's uh -huh. in the same region as Tim View, and Skyview is leading by two touchdowns early in that ballgame. Wow. Orem uh, with the number one seed because of all the shakeup. Mm -hmm. Tim Panogas at Mount Crest. Two, there's another couple of teams with a winning record playing each other. So because of that shakeup, Mount Crest gets the number one seed, and then they get to play a team that's, I want to say, 8-2. Um, and two. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Has a safe record as they do. Highlands at Olympus, Skyline at Bountiful, Box Elders at Maple Mountain. Most of the other games going on today. Well, I love to see Logan play in Tempview. It's just a fun game to watch, but I really think the UHSA dropped the ball in their well, they didn't third judgment. Drop the ball. They spiked it right on their own foot. Lloyd hits his receiver just as he turns, but it's a little low and it hits the ground first. So Lloyd's first incompletion. Of the ball game. Another flag. There's another flag on the field, and it's right at the line of scrimmage. Holding on Tempio. Maybe Tempio will stop holding here shortly. That's about the that's fifth the, holding. That's the fourth holding penalty. Holding, holding against the Tempio Thunderbirds. So it's pretty apparent that they're going to call that. This crew's going to call it. You know, each officiating crew calls games differently, too. It's true. This is a mixed crew. We've seen a couple of these guys on different crews before. Once you get in the well, playoffs. And the, the thing about it, when, when they start calling it and start seeing it, that's when they start seeing it more often. So fans are like, why are you calling so much holding? Well, they've started to see how the teams are playing and especially the, the linemen from each team, and it becomes easier to call. Lloyd all by himself in second and 18. Rolls far side, underneath. He's got his man, and it's complete out there to Mull. Tyus Mull picks up nine. It'll be third and nine. <laughs> Pardon me, that's Atherton. That's Atherton. Two for two on third down. Third and nine. On third and eight last time, Lloyd ran for 20 yards. Lloyd, lots of time. Underneath, got his man. Another great big receiver. Wide open in the middle of the zone, and it's Rhett Van Leeuwen. And he picks up 15, 16 yards almost. Well, you wondered if they uh, had a chance to make some coverage changes in the Logan defense. The answer is no. But if they have made changes, they're not working because the result is the same. <laughs> with a large, tall, high school kid dressed all in white standing alone. Now Logan looked like they were playing zone that time and Van Leeuwen just sat down right in the middle of the zone. Good route by Van Leeuwen and Lloyd had all day to find him. Here's the give to Aspinall. Aspinall looks like he's going outside and then cuts back great inside Aspinall. and picks up seven. Well, Aspinall's got a great cut. As soon as he sees that hole, he, he runs down the line, sees it, he plants that foot hard and he's upfield in a hurry. You know, he's headed outside only a couple times. Yeah. Most of the time, he's cutting it back inside. And he's you're looking at this Logan defense. This is really, it's a demoralizing drive going on here by Timview. Your offense didn't score. Timview's had third and long twice, and they are just chewing you And three you penalties. Up and spitting you out. And Logan D hasn't been able to find an answer for him yet. Aspinall. Again, that cut back to the middle. He's got a first down easily. Down to the 
nine yards. Aspinall on six carries has 43 yards. Both sides of the ball this, this first half. Tim View's been the aggressor. They've been it's true coming, pressure on defense. Pressuring on defense. They've been coming at you on offense. And Tim View's got to take another timeout because the clock was down to one second. They're taking plenty of time in the huddle, and then they're using as much of the clock as they can. Timeout. Just methodically driving downfield. Logan looking for an answer defensively. 632. Well, with this offense, it all starts with Lloyd at the quarterback position. And you talked about it earlier. He has, he's had no pressure. They've not had a sniff today in this game to get in the backfield and put a hand on him. Yeah, they've done a good job of protecting him. Again, they roll him out every so often. And I mean, he could stand back there all day. And you, you come up with turnovers and interceptions when you pressure quarterbacks, make them make mistakes, but the offensive line's done a great job for Tempview. Guard and tackle pulling on that play, and they're just running that lead Aspinall to Aspinall, and he picks up another eight yards. I mean, they're pulling the guard and the tackle from the backside, and then they are just overloading one side and crushing that left side of the Logan defense. Second and three. Well, you keep going to the well till it dries up, and so far there's plenty of water there. You bet. Keep running it, right? Here's the, this is the same formation. This time Lloyd's going to throw right over the middle. He's got a man wide open, and he misses him. That should have been another Timview touchdown. Eckhoff running free, 6'3", 215-pound tight end, and all the time in the world, and just you're right, just floats it. He had three receivers, so that means they, they were doing basically not quite max protect, but they kept seven in the quarterback and then six in the block. You're not going to get pressure on a quarterback when you've got four on six. Big third down here. Logan. Ball snapped and Lloyd wasn't ready. And Logan's saying they've got it and their flags before the before the snap because people were moving for Timview. So if Logan has it, this will end up this will end up yeah, being beneficial to Timview. So a false start penalty takes away what looked like a turnover for the Logan defense. How many dollars do you want to bet me that Tim View converts now? <laughs> on, this well, on this third and nine. How many third downs have they not converted? One. That's Actually, no, they converted on the nine. That's what I thought. They're four for four. Now Logan wants a timeout. 5.37 to play here in the first half. This has been nearly a five minute drive by Timview. They took over down deep in their own territory after Logan turned over on downs. And they'd gone from the 12 yard line and actually a penalty back up to seven. And now here they are on the Logan 27. And you talk about Timview being this wide open passing attack. They really haven't. They, they've, they've gone no. downfield twice. I, I say that, but they've gone downfield deep twice to Raymond. Both times touchdowns. Everything else has been very patient, very methodical. Well, they're running the ball yeah, well. they're setting it up with great running plays. So the linebacking core and the defensive backs of Logan are really back and forth. And that's why we're seeing those big wide open receivers. They watch it as a football fan. It's good football. Good offensive football. Logan defense looking for an answer. They thought they had a turnover a moment ago, but it was taken away by a penalty. Now they bring the blitz. Lloyd looking to the sideline. Did it skip? Nope. It did. 
Well, the Logan defense holds on third down and nine. Does Timview go for it? Or do I'm, they try to kick? I would. Their offense has done just about anything they wanted to of late. I think they're going to go for it. Or this could change the momentum of the entire game and get the head of the defense collectively back in this game. Or conversely, be the nail in the coffin with 6.32 to go. And we talked about 532. be in danger time for Logan. Here comes pressure again. Lloyd off his back foot. Can't get it there, and Logan takes over, and Lloyd finally ends up on his can. The last two plays, the Logan defense has gotten there and put him down. Lloyd stood in there to the last minute and couldn't quite get it to Raymond, who jogs off the field. Both sides, and he's really just got to step off. His, he can't step into that and throw it, so it, it floats a little bit. Logan brought a couple extra players that time, brought some pressure. So Lloyd just didn't have all day to sit back there and try to pick him apart. Falk's 9 of 12, 99 yards and a touchdown. Falk in trouble again, spins out of trouble, tries to throw it forward to Braddy and it's incomplete. Tyus Moe, number 17 Angels for Timview down on the field. It's number 17, Tyus Moe, who's rolling around down there. Boy, Manning looks up as he's going down and, and sees number seven, Braddy, there, and that's a good outlet for him. Does a good job just getting it out and making sure it finds the turf. There's Kai. That must be an awfully quick line because there's guys from Tim View just running right past offensively. <laughs> so, again, we saw him get him off sides once with the snap count. I wonder if, you know, they'll change up cadence a little bit because they are just pinning their ears back and coming. Well, they're running the same thing. They're really doing the same thing Mountain Crest did a few weeks ago. How about a big hand for Tyus? I don't know if Tyus Moe, he's got his arm. He's holding his arm up there. He, his arm got landed on by not only Luke Falk, but another defender at the same Seven time. I don't know if he got the wind knocked out of him or he hurt that arm, but he was holding the arm funny. And they're going to take him back and look at it. Second and ten. Timview ate up five minutes off that drive. They did not score, but they flipped field position. Falk under pressure again, and down he goes again. Talmoy Penu was the first one there, made him step right up into the sack. He loses six. Third sack of Falk in this first half. Well, he's just got nowhere to go either. A lot of times when the quarter, quarterbacks feel that pressure from the outside, they can step up into the pocket and find an open lane, but there's four defenders from Timothy right there. Four coming after Falk over the middle, and it's knocked down. Artist was open, and now a flag thrown. Artist was just walloped. He was walloped, and yep. the ball was our, had already been tipped and knocked down. Tyler Solar, Solarzano just blew I, up Artist. And now he's a defenseless Look, receiver. He's looking the other he's way. He's looking back looking. at the ball. Boom. Bam. That's a personal foul. Yeah, that's way too late. It doesn't matter if the ball was tipped. Tim is saying, hey, the ball was tipped. No, it doesn't matter if the ball was tipped. The play's dead. The play was dead. The kid's turned around, and he's walking back toward the ball. Um, Solarzano disgusted with that, and he was strutting a little bit, and a good, good penalty. Ball. And they First stick to their guns. Solarzano doesn't like the call. I, the, the problem was is it was – Two full steps yeah. before he got there. If it would have been one step and boom. And it was also a shot to the head. And you could have called three or four penalties on that one. If it's It'll one step and he hits and him. The short yard. So it was third and 16. And it's yardage now this year with the penalties. 
it's not an automatic first down. So on 15 yards, that's going to put him up real close to that first down because it was about fourth and we had this 16. Let's see if they measure this one. They're going to. Or they make it fourth and yard. It looks to me like it's going to be just a little short. Now what do you do here? Do you put Braddy up under center and just have him run a quarterback sneak? Try to get him off 